The Lone Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. I'd like to read you something. The label on a loaf of Merida old-fashioned enriched white bread. And I quote, Enriched means that eight ounces of this bread supplies the following percentages of minimum daily requirement for these essential food substances. Thiamine, vitamin B1, 90%. Riboflavin, vitamin B2, 66%. Niacin, another B vitamin, 75%. Iron, 62.5%. Calcium, 20%. But that's just the outside story. What goes into Merida old-fashioned white bread is another story. A story of a rich old recipe. A recipe that produces an old-fashioned bread that's rounded at the top with a crust that's golden brown, firm yet tender, moist, and very delicious. So when you buy Merida old-fashioned enriched white bread, read what's on it and remember what's in it. his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver! Dan Reed, teenage nephew of the Lone Ranger, returned from an eastern school for the summer vacation. He joined the Lone Ranger and Tonto at their camp in the hills near Stockton and learned they were searching for an outlaw gang reported to be led by a slim man who dressed in black and wore a black mask. One morning, Dan prepared to go to town for supplies. Steady, Victor. Easy, boy. Yeah, we're about ready to leave for town. Oh, Victor, plenty glad to see you, Dan. Him not like boarding at livery stable while you wait. <laughs> now, I sure missed him, haven't I, fella? Here's the cash in the list, Dan. There isn't much to bring back. Oh, thank you. Tonto and I'll return to camp about noon. We'll see you then. All right. Easy, boy. Steady, fella. Goodbye. Adios. Come on, Victor. Dan entered the general store in Stockton and waited while the storekeeper gave attention to another customer. Let me see. Bacon, sugar, coffee. Ah. Yeah, it seems like there was something else you asked for, ma'am. Oh, you, you've forgotten the flour, Mr. Jackson. Oh. I'm afraid I confused you by asking for several things at the same time. <laughs> Grab it, ma'am. Reckon my memory's slipping. Uh, not that I'm so old, mind you. Old? Oh, of course not. Why, you're in the prime of life, Mr. Jackson. Oh, oh, nice of you to say that. Mighty nice. I'll bring a sack of flour and a jiffy. Dan glanced casually at the customer while the storekeeper went to get the flour. Then the young man's heart skipped a beat. His eyes rested on a young woman about 20 with deep blue eyes set in a smooth, well-tanned face who frankly returned his gaze. Rippling golden hair held in place by a silken scarf topped the slim girlish figure which was enhanced by a silk blouse and flowing fringe skirt of soft buckskin. Small black boots elaborately carved completed her attire. Inwardly pleased by the effect of her beauty upon the handsome youth, she half smiled, then turned away as the storekeeper brought the flower. Here it is, ma'am. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, that's all, Mr. Jackson. Uh, how much does all that come to? Uh, let me see. Uh, four... A uh, sack comes to sixteen fifty, ma'am. Uh, here's twenty. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, here, 
Here's a change. Thank you. Oh, my buckboard is outside. Will you please load the supplies for me? Oh, right away, ma'am. Oh, no hurry. I'm going to the dry goods store before I leave town. Goodbye, Mr. Jackson. Goodbye, ma'am. Come again. Ah. Well, young fella, what can I do for you? After getting the supplies and stowing them in his saddlebags, Dan rode slowly from town along the trail toward the camp. He was only a mile from town when he heard fast hoofbeats coming behind him. Looking back, he saw Sally driving a team hitched to a buckboard. She was recklessly urging the horses to greater speed. Get up there! Get up! Get Easy, up Victor. There. Easy, stick. Dan pulled Victor to one side to allow the racing vehicle to pass. Hi there! Hi! Get up! Get up there! Get up! After passing Dan, the girl looked back and waved. While her attention was diverted from the trail, the buckboard sideswiped a large rounded boulder and overturned. <laughs> Come on, Victor. Ho, Victor, ho, ho, steady, boy. The girl had been thrown from the seat, landing in the brush. As Dan ran to her, she stood up, brushing her clothing. Are you hurt? No, I just, just knocked the wind out of me. Oh, dear, my boots are covered with flour. Uh, a sack of flour broke open. I'll brush off your boots, Miss Anderson. I'll use my handkerchief. Well... I saw you in the store, but I didn't expect to have you kneeling at my feet so soon after. I sure didn't expect to get acquainted like this, ma'am. How did you know my name? The storekeeper told me. Oh, what's your name? Dan Reed. Do you live around here? You might say I'm staying with friends. How about you? Well, my answer is the same. There. I think I got most of the flour off. Uh, I'll write your buckboard now. Oh, I'd better help. Come on. <laughs> Together, Dan and the girl righted the buckboard and picked up the supplies. Sally once more took her place on the seat, saying, Thanks a lot, Dan. I'm glad you were around to help me. Frankly, you shouldn't be driving so recklessly. Take it easy from now on. If anyone else talked to me like that, I'd resent it. <laughs> but I'll take it from you, Dan. I'll, uh, I'll ride with you no, if you want. No, uh, I'd rather you didn't. All right. But I'd like to meet you again, Miss Addison. Sally? <laughs> Maybe you will, Dan. But don't count on it too much. Goodbye and thanks. Get up! Get up! Get up! I'll be done. Make the steady boy. Come on, Victor. Dan, confused and puzzled by the girl's attitude continued toward camp to meet the Lone Ranger and Toto. Meanwhile, Sally Addison drove to a small farmhouse a few miles away. She entered the main room, where five men were seated at a table eating noonday dinner. Here's Sal now, men. Hi, boys. Hi. Well, I think I've made my last trip to town. Yeah? Why do you say that? I have my reasons, Carl. What's the matter? I'm fed up, that's all. I'm thinking of leaving the gang. Listen. When your father was alive, he hired me as a gunman to help protect the sheep ranch from the cattlemen down Austin Way. After he was killed by the cattlemen, you swore to get even. Saying the law didn't try to protect him or do anything about the killing. I know all that. So you sold out and talked me into getting this gang together. And with you leading us as a mysterious black bandit, you've been getting your revenge on the ranchers and the law alike. So why stop now? You're in too deep anyway. I'm beginning to realize there are some decent people in the West, Carl. Oh. oh. <laughs> so that's it. You must have met some cow-eyed waddy who... Shut up! You... Forget what I said a few minutes ago. I'll stick with the gang. Good girl. We knew you wouldn't back out on us. Now we'll pull one more job, then we'll leave here. Tomorrow afternoon, just before closing time, we'll rob the Stockton Bank. That'll be our last job in this territory. The next morning, Dan was up early and soon had his horse, Victor, saddled and bridled. The Lone Ranger remarked, Where are you going, Dan? Oh, no place in particular. I thought you might need something from town. I think we have enough supplies for now. Oh. <laughs> now me wonder what make Dan want to go to town again, Kimosabe. <laughs> Uh, him 
plenty quiet yesterday when he come back with supplies. Him sit, look at moon last night. <laughs> <laughs> What's the girl's name, Dan? What? Sally Addison. She wouldn't say where she lives. <laughs> well, there's no harm in you going to town if you want to, Dan. We'll be back for an early supper. I hope you meet the girl again and get a chance to talk to her. Say, thanks a lot. I'll be back for supper. Goodbye. Adios. Adios. Is he steady, boy? Come on, Victor. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich, old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Marita. Marita enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. Now to continue. Dan Reed rode to Stockton and spent the hours watching for the appearance of the golden-haired girl he'd met the day before. Just before bank closing time, Dan walked slowly along Main Street. As he passed the bank, he was startled by a sudden commotion inside. A moment later, the bank door opened and several masked men ran out. Dan was unarmed, and as a bullet whined close, he dropped beside the heavy watering trough on the edge of the curb. Better take cover. The outlaws ran to their horses near Dan. He raised his head and glimpsed the leader, a slim masked figure dressed in black. Get up! Get up! For a fleeting moment, the leader's boot-clad feet were visible to Dan. Then leader and gang rode away hurriedly. You get hit, youngster? No, sir, I'm all right. Get a look at any of them? Not enough to help, sir. I'll get a posse together and trail them. Boys! Dan stood a moment thinking. He had noticed the leader's boots, black carved boots, such as many other men wore. But Dan had seen a white powder, such as flour, discoloring the indented carving on the leader's boots. Sally Addison's boots had looked that way the day before, after he had cleaned them of the flour that had spilled over them. No, it couldn't be. How could he be wearing her boots? I don't... Dan suddenly realized with a shock that the leader was small and slim. A mask had covered the greater part of the face and a wide-brimmed Stetson pulled low could have covered a mass of golden hair. No. I can't believe that. I won't believe it. The leader couldn't be Sally Addison. Dan stood staring at the hoof marks left near the hitch rack by the leader's horse. He noticed one of the horse's shoes was new, and the sharp points of the iron shoe left deep indentations in the earth. Well, I have to find out for myself. I'll try to trail that leader before the posse starts out. Easy, Victor. Steady, boy. Come on, Victor. Ordinarily, Dan would have told the sheriff what he suspected. But confused and bewildered by the turn of events, he set out alone to trail the leader. For years, Dan had been trained by the Lone Ranger and Tonto in finding and following a trail. Outside of town, the gang had separated, but Dan continued to follow the leader's tracks. Up, Victor. Up, boy. Once he lost them in a shallow stream and again on a rocky surface. But the training he'd had was not in vain, and he soon found them again on a narrow, weed-grown path. As he rode, a sudden storm broke. Yeah. The tracks will be washed away now. Yeah, I'll continue to follow this path and see where it leads me. Come on, Victor. In spite of the rain, Dan kept riding. Just after the storm passed, he topped a low hill and saw the back of a small farmhouse in a hollow. He drew rein and dismounted behind the barn. Oh, oh Victor, who's steady, boy? 
As he rounded the corner of the building, he came face to face with Carl holding a gun. Reach and free. I watched you come here, young fella. Just waited to surprise you. Now keep your hands high while I see if you have a gun. I have no gun. So I notice you got a lot of nerve riding here unarmed. You must be one of the gang. Sure. Take me to your leader. <laughs> I'll take you to meet the whole gang, my friend. Now walk ahead of me to the farmhouse. A few minutes later, Carl brought Dan at gunpoint into the presence of the gang. Inside. <laughs> Caught this young fellow behind the barn. You shouldn't have brought him in here. Don't worry. I already figured out who you are in spite of that disguise, Miss Addison. Holy mackerel, he knows you. How'd he figure that out? Does it matter? All right, you figured it out. I... I'm sorry you did. Well, we can't let him live. He'd give the whole thing away, uh, Sal. Uh, sure. I'll put a bullet in him right now. Oh, wait. Holster that gun, Slinky. It's the idea. If he gets away and talks... He won't get away. Carl, you and Slinky take him to the barn and tie him. Then come back here and I'll tell you what we'll do with him. All right, come on, you. The two outlaws tied Dan securely inside the barn, then returned to the house. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had returned to their camp and waited for Dan. Finally, they decided to ride to meet him and set out on the trail to town. As they followed the trail between some giant boulders, a shot rang out. The masked man and Indian saw the sheriff and his men ride from behind the boulders with ready guns. The sheriff and a posse. They must have seen us coming and waited in hiding. Uh, Good thing we saw you before you spotted us, mister. We know you two are part of the gang that robbed the bank a while ago. We're not outlaws. Shut up and keep reaching. We'll take him. Him not outlaw. Him lone ranger. I say he's an... Who'd you say he is? Him lone ranger. Lone ranger. If you can prove that, mister, I'll apologize. I have a letter from the United States Marshal in my pocket asking us to come here, Sheriff. If you'll allow me, Wait, let me see it. Don't forget you're covered. All right. Here it is. Quickly, the sheriff read the letter, then handed it back, saying... Doggone, you are the lone ranger. I'm sure sorry I mistook you for outlaws. That's all right, Sheriff. We're on the way to town to meet a young man riding a white horse. A tall, nice-looking young fella on a white horse with fancy riding gear? That's right. Why, he's the hombre I saw heading out of town the same direction the bank robbers took about ten minutes before we started out. Yes, Yes? Maybe him try trail outlaws. Looks that way, Toto. Was it the mystery bandit gang, Sheriff? Sure was. We're hunting them right now. Well, if you don't mind, we'll ride with you. Oh, glad to have you. Let's go, men. Get up, get up, get up. Come on, fill it. Come on, come on. Later in the farmhouse, Sally was speaking to the men. She still wore her disguise as the mystery bandit. Now, about that young man in the barn... Well, he knows too much. Right. we got to plug him, Sal. Let me go out there now and finish. No, wait. I've been thinking. I'm in plenty deep with this gang. If he talks, I'm done for. I uh, have made up my mind. I'll be the one to put a bullet in him. Now, when you hear the shot, you'll know what happened. All right. A few minutes later, Sally stood before Dan Reed in the dim light of the barn's interior. Dan, I... I told the men I was coming here to kill you. You'd really kill me, Sally? Now listen, there's a way out. If you make a solemn promise right now that you won't tell anyone I'm the gang leader, and that you won't tell anyone how to get here, I... I'll untie you and let you go. Uh, I don't know. Dan thought quickly. If he made such a promise, he'd be bound to keep it. But the gang must be captured. Then he thought of a way to keep his promise and perhaps still bring about their capture. He finally spoke. All right, Sally. I promise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you turned out to be a... A crook, is that it? Forget it. (laughs) I'm not your kind anyway. And though I think you're just a nice youngster... Well, forget it. There, you're untied. Thanks. I'll fire a shot now. The others will expect to hear. Now, now get out of here before I change my mind. I'm going back into the house. Now I'll take Victor and their horses out the back way. Then set fire to the hay in the barn. It should blaze up in a hurry. If the posse's anywhere nearby, that should bring them. In the farmhouse, Sally was saying... Men, the sooner we leave here, the better. Hey, look through the window. Smoke. Sure enough. 
Hey, the barn's blazing. We'll lose our horses. Come on. No, the fire has too much headway. Riders coming. Take cover. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. The sheriff's posse had seen the blaze and galloped to the farm where they were met by gunfire. For a short time, the gun battle raged. Two of the outlaws fell wounded, and three of the sheriff's men were hit by bullets before the crooks were subdued. Finally, they threw down their guns and stood in a dejected group surrounded by the men of the posse. Well, looks like we got the gang of the mystery bandits, including the mystery bandit himself. I'll remove that hat and mask and we'll get a good look at him. Keep them all covered, men. All right, Sheriff. All right. There. Well, hey, look at that. Look at that. Oh, great day, a girl. Oh, uh, wait, Sheriff. Is your name Sally Addison? What if it is? Oh, oh, Victor. Oh, oh. Dan, we were worried about you. I'm all right, sir. I waited back in the grove while you all moved in on the gang. What about your promise? I you kept see? my promise, Sally. I didn't promise not to set fire to the barn. Good idea, son. We saw all the smoke and came to see about it. Then we saw the gang. Tie them all and take them to town, men. Yeah, the girl right, saved my life, Sheriff. Well, maybe that'll help her at her trial. Dan, Cotto, we'll leave now. I'm sure Dan would rather not stay longer. Adios, everybody. Easy. Bye, Easy. Right, Goodbye, Miss Anderson. Sorry it had to be this way. Come on, children. Come on, come on. Oh. Goodbye, Dan. Good luck. Always. Hmm, so that's the way it was, huh? Ah, shut up. I'm ready to take my medicine. If I knew he was a friend to a masked man, now, maybe I Now, don't would... get the wrong idea, ma'am. Anybody who has that masked man for a friend is mighty lucky. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Remember way back when? When you were a kid growing up. You always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. Listen to the Lone Ranger. Lying out of sight in the underbrush, he heard the voices of two men who had halted their horses near the edge of the arroyo. And I figure he'll keep the letter locked up with his cash in the cash box. Yeah, I reckon you're right. He's got no safe in the store. We'll bust open the cash box and read the letter. Knowing the plans, it'll be easy for us to waylay the gent who's carrying the diamonds. Yeah, but when Jeb sees the cash box broken open and the letter gone, he'll send word to Farnsworth and the plans will be changed. Then the information that's in the letter won't mean a thing. Now we'll leave the letter in the cash box and just take the cash. So that it'll look like an ordinary robbery. Even so, Jeb will figure that the thief saw the letter and he'll let Farnsworth know. Not the way I've planned it. Well, go on. That old man they call Uncle Dave works in a cafe. We'll go there and start a fight. It'll leave the gunplay and Dave will be killed by accident. In the excitement, slip the cash into his pocket. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.